Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. Today we are gonna solve lab number two, and in this lab we are gonna see server side request forgery via OpenID dynamic client registration. So before going to solve this lab, we must understand this concept about dynamic client registration, and we also uh, know we must know the key points about OpenID as we saw about the OAuth. So let's go. I'm gonna uh, explain it in a very brief. So as I mentioned in my previous videos that OpenID is actually an authentication uh, layer which we can put over the OAuth open authorization because open authorization purposely built for the authorization purposes but authorization comes after the authentication. So if you want to put a layer of authentication over OAuth we can use OpenID Connect. So OpenID basically uh, maintained by the OpenID Foundation. It is also open standard. Uh, so OpenID Connect extends the OAuth protocol to provide a dedicated identity and authentication layer that sits on top of the basic OAuth implementation. Fine. And it adds some simple functionality that enables better support for the authentication use case of the OAuth. So there is some history and uh, some uh, very useful information, very important information about the OAuth. As you can see, uh, OAuth was not initially built or designed for the authentication in mind. So uh, I would highly recommend you guys to read all of these content. But most importantly, I will jump to how does OpenID Connect works and what are the roles there as we saw in the OAuth. So uh, if you see the authorization request, in the burp suite while you are engaging with the OAuth uh, implementation you will see the response type is id token so uh, if it's using only the OAuth at that instant you may see the parameter response type value is code or token code means it's using grant type authorization code and token means it's using uh, implicit grant type but if it's using uh, open id connect that then uh, in the authorization request from the client application, you will see the parameter uh, response type value is ID underscore token. So you can see uh, open ID connect roles. These are important roles like the first one is relying party. Relying party means this is the third party application who rely on the open ID provider. Okay, so relying party is the third party application who is requesting for the authentication of a user. So you can see this is a synonym with the OAuth client application. End user is the subject, the user who is being authenticated. This is synonym with the OAuth resource owner. Okay, means the data subject. Um, OpenID provider, of course, the service which is providing the service APIs for the OpenID. It's the open ID provider fine so these are the three key uh, key points here in the roles uh, now one more thing uh, we already saw in the previous lab that once the third party client application first generate the authorization request at that instant uh, we saw some parameters like claims okay and we saw scopes so this is all in the format of key value pairs Okay, so like family name is Montoya, uh, first name uh, is this, mobile number is this, email ID is this, something like that. So unlike basic OAuth, whose scope are unique to each provider, all OpenID Connect services use an identical set of scopes. So in order to use OpenID Connect, the client application must specify the scope is equal to OpenID. So once you see or analyze the authorization request, you will see the parameter value of scope is OpenID. Okay, and this OpenID you already saw before, it included OpenID, then profile, then email. It can also uh, provide address but it depends to what information the third party application wants to access and uh, user wants to provide the consent on it or not okay each of these scope corresponds to read access for a subset of claims about the user that are defined in the open id specification for example open id space profile space email and it could be anything okay now the important thing here is id token which i see here which we see here where is it 
response type so response if you see response type is equal to id token in the authorization request so you know that it's gonna be the jwt token so this jwt token stands for json web token and this is with a signature with json web signature so if the jwt token is not signed that means anyone can uh, decode it and see the information and manipulate the information i already recorded the whole module about the jwt token if you are interested in that you can visit to the playlist of json web token vulnerabilities fine so the jwt payload contains a list of claims based on the scope that was initially requested so uh, according to the scope or whatever information the third party wants to access user provide the consent and according to that uh, the information will be found in the payload section okay so algorithm payload and the signature three sections are there so it also contains information about how and when the user was lost last authenticated by the oauth service so rest of the things you will find you will find in the payload section the client application can use this to decide whether or not the user has been sufficiently authenticated or not so all this information within a single token and that's why uh, the authentication and authorization uh, part will not be very loaded because of too many requests as we saw in the uh, authorization code grant type okay so within one request and response within uh, one time authentication and consent you will directly get the jwt token with all the information the main benefit of using id token is the reduced number of requests that need to be sent between the client application and the oauth service which could provide better performance overall so instead of having to get an access token and then request the user data separately then the application will validate the token and then give and provide and say yeah okay this user is uh, fine i already verified and validated and now you are authenticated so instead of all this um, messed up scenario the id token containing this data is sent to the client application immediately after the user has authenticated themselves because we have the id token here so rather than simply relying on the trusted channel as happens in basic oauth the integrity of data transmitted in an id token is based on the jwt cryptographic signature so for this reason the use of id tokens may help protect against some man the middle attack however given that the cryptographic keys for signature verification and transmitted over the same network channel normally exposed on this endpoint fine and some attacks are still possible so if you are interested you can directly go and access my jwt uh, vulnerabilities uh, playlist and you can find bunch of labs there okay so now one more important thing which you need to uh, keep in mind because maybe uh, you will encounter this this thing uh, as I mentioned that if you see the response type parameter value is token that means implicit grant type or implicit flow has been followed and if you see only the code that means authorization code grant type of OAuth has been followed but uh, you can also use ID token with the implicit grant type or you can again use uh, ID token with the authorization code grant type okay so if you encounter this don't panic uh, fine now identifying open id connect how you will uh, you will know that okay uh, open id implementation is there or has been placed so whenever you see in the first authorization request from the third party client or third party application if you see the scope parameter value with open id that means open id connect uh, is implemented so even if the login process does not initially appear to be using open id connect it is still worth checking whether the oauth service supports it or not and you can simply try adding the open id value within the scope parameter and change the response type to id underscore token and observe whether the response have any error or not so maybe uh, within the authorization uh, request scope within the scope parameter you will not find open id value but you can test it by just uh, editing the request and the value of the scope parameter to open id 
and the request type is equal to id token okay and just send the request and see if you get any error or not if there is no error that means open id connect is still there and oauth service is supporting the open uh, open authentication uh, open id connect fine <clears throat> So this is again the very important uh, point you need to know that uh, the open ID configuration file exists within this endpoint. Okay, so uh, if you are dealing with any kind of uh, OAuth uh, service, you can uh, verify whether the open ID connect can be supported by OAuth service or not. And then you can go and check the open ID configuration file with this endpoint. Okay. Now, this is the terminology and how it works. Now, where the Open ID Connect vulnerability arises. So, uh, basically, the Open ID Connect vulnerability arises in the implementation part. Okay, because you can see the Open ID Connect is much stricter than the basic OAuth, which means that there is generally less potential for quickie implementation and glaring vulnerability. Fine. So I would highly recommend you to uh, read all this content. Now this is the point where uh, we are gonna deal the second lab, unprotected dynamic client registration. In dynamic client registration, what happened? Uh, authentication was missing. If authentication is missing, then the vulnerability arises, okay? So if any threat actor can add his own uh, client, to the uh, open id connect without authentication that means this is the problem and this is the point where this vulnerability arises so the open id specification outlines a standardized way for allowing client application to register with the open id provider so if dynamic client registration is supported the client application can register itself by sending a POST request to a dedicated endpoint. So this endpoint here, for example, register slash registration, it could be anything. It could be ABC or it could be uh, any randomized value or alphanumeric value, but uh, you can find it within the uh, configuration file of the open ID. So that's why this configuration file is important to see. Okay. Now, the name of this endpoint is usually provided in the configuration file as i mentioned so you can see we can try to uh, we can try to register our client by uh, generating or creating one post request where we can uh, provide some redirect uris okay and if authentication is not implemented before authorizing or registering the client that means uh, the problem arises. So you can see here, uh, this is the uh, demo request, which you can follow. So here you can see uh, logo URI, you can specify token endpoint method, you can specify uh, JWKS URI, you can specify this, we will see that in uh, more detail once we are gonna solve the lab. But I just want you to now understand this that problem here is dynamic client registration without authentication without authenticating the client before registering uh, before process the registration fine so the open id provider should require the client application to authenticate itself this is the point this is the point so in the example above there were using an http barrier token However, some providers will allow dynamic client registration without any authentication, which enables an attacker to register their own malicious client application. So this can have various consequences depending on how the values of these attacker controllable properties are used. Fine, so for example, uh, you can see here, uh, there are a bunch of parameters and URI you can uh, define in this particular request. And if the open ID provider accessing those URIs, SSRF vulnerability may exist, or you can say second order SSRF vulnerabilities uh, can be found, okay? So I think uh, much explanation and we already talked much about uh, this particular topic about OpenID Connect and dynamic client registration. Uh, and I think if uh, in the same video, I'm gonna solve this lab, it's gonna take much time and the video will be 
too much longer so in the second part i will solve this lab so for now thank you very much and if you like the content please like subscribe and share i'm gonna see you in the next video bye